Welcome back. When we broke a few minutes ago, um, we were talking about conscious thought. And I had asked you, how much conscious thought do we actually retain even in a deep trance? Not very much. Um, I, even though I do hypnosis and have experienced hypnosis for many years, only once have I actually gone into a sonambulistic trance. And I was gone. Okay. <laughs> It was uh, in a workshop uh, with Stephen Gilligan, who's a renowned expert in hypnotherapy. He's extraordinarily good. Uh -huh. And um, I don't know where I was, but I was gone, and it was wonderful. I ended up losing seven pounds as a result of it within Goodness. the next two weeks. <laughs> Goodness. But um, yeah, it's just a very pleasant, uh, a very sleep-like uh, experience. So when you uh, awake, you were feeling refreshed? Yes, very definitely. Okay. Well, you know, I wanted to point out that we have here uh, some tapes that you put out in terms of uh, hypnosis. We have Enhancing Your Self-Esteem, Sleep Soundly, A Remedy for Insomnia, yes. Stop Snoring, which we all could certainly know someone who could benefit from that, <laughs> uh, Relaxation and Confidence, and Banishing PMS. Now, I think you're coming out with a new one also, aren't Yes, you? the next one will be Comfortable Menopause. Comfortable menopause. Yes. Okay. And uh, what I did was uh, I had a chance to listen to the relaxation tape. And on this particular tape, you do a wonderful exercise to demonstrate um, this idea of um, uh, it was the lemon exercise. Right, right. Okay. And so what I've done is uh, I'd like us to, t to listen to that. Okay. And I have a graphic people can look at as they're doing so. Okay. Um, but let's, let's turn our attention to that at this time. Sure. Now take another couple of deep breaths and begin to imagine a lemon in your mind's eye just as clearly as you can. Take a moment to really see the images of the lemon, round or oblong, with the stem end slightly bulging. Notice the pores in the skin of the lemon. You may even begin to smell the lemon smell as you handle the lemon and feel the waxy texture of the lemon peel. See and feel and smell this just as clearly as you can. Now in your mind's eye, Place the lemon on a cutting board. Hold it safely with one hand so it stays still and doesn't roll. Take a sharp knife in your other hand and slowly cut the lemon in two. The other half rolls around slightly. Look at the pulp of the lemon, the membranes dividing the sections. Probably there are a number of seeds that you can see in the center of the lemon. You may smell that lemon smell even stronger now that there is lemon juice on the cutting board and the knife. Now take half of the lemon and squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on your tongue. Tilt your head back and stick out your tongue and catch a few drops of the juice and really taste the lemon juice in your mouth. Get the full flavor of the lemon juice. There. What did you know? Okay, so we had an opportunity to do the lemon exercise. Yes. And what, what are we going to be experiencing? Or what do you, th you say on there that a certain number of people seem to have a similar kind of experience? Right, right. I use this exercise to demonstrate the power of imagery and, and mild uh, light trance of hypnosis on our physical bodies. About three quarters of the people in a given group will in fact salivate quite a bit based on this imagery exercise. In fact, I'm sitting <laughs> salivating <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. 
And so it really demonstrates the power of um, imagery to affect the body, which is useful in helping people understand that the imagery is going to help them relax. Okay. So let's pick a particular problem here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, PMS. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, are, what would we be imaging? I mean, for an example, uh, what, would you have us go through a relaxation experience first? Or how does this work? Well, the first section usually is an induction. It is the process of going into trance, of relaxing. Uh, all of these tapes are made for use at bedtime, Mary. And okay. so it doesn't take any extra time out of a person's day, uh, in this case, a woman's day. Um, so she gets into a relaxed state. And by that time, she's going to be off in her own personal imagery, for the most part, enjoying herself. And I proceed. Um, to give a number of suggestions about the fact that she, in fact, can experience um, herself comfortably before her period and during her period, um, give suggestions that will counteract a lot of the irritability, for instance, the short-temperedness that many women experience. Um, also give some suggestions about the body being able to be very relaxed and comfortable so that it eliminates backaches, cramps, headaches, those kinds of things. And what do you find? Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of research going on about the connection between mind-body work. Right. And uh, are you finding that to be very effective in terms oh. of how much influence our mind has over our physiological response? Absolutely. A woman who gave me some feedback. She's a um, uh, realtor broker, real estate broker. And uh, she had, in fact, been complaining about uh, um, her premenstrual tension and, and how irritable she was and how that sort of got in the way. And so I called her a couple of weeks later, and I said, well, how's it going uh, using the tape? And she said, to quote Jill, uh -huh. she said, I didn't even know I was going to have my period. Wow. So it can be extremely effective. Now, um, I'm not saying that every single woman who uses the tape would find it that effective, but most women report you know, a, a very definite improvement. So we're talking about um, a therapeutic intervention that's really not very intrusive. I mean, this is something oh, that, yeah. that is kind of a natural physiologic response. Right. And it doesn't sound uh, like it in any way traumatizes our body or makes us oh, no. in any way uncomfortable. Or... In most all of the hypnosis I do, whether it's in my office and certainly on all the tapes, I do include a suggestion, Mary, that your unconscious mind will use this only for your benefit and welfare for your health and well-being, okay. to absolutely ensure that your unconscious utilizes it in that kind of way. OK. We have a graphic of uh, uses for hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Let's see. Well, it produces anesthesia in the body. In fact, I remember in my research for tonight reading about a particular surgeon who had performed uh, in the 1800s about 1,400 uh, surgeries just using hypnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, improving sleep and reducing stress, uh, controlling painful symptoms, controlling some organic functions like blood pressure and heart rate, uh, making possible partial age regression, I'll certainly ask more about that, and compresses a great deal of thinking and recall into a very short period of time. Okay, mm -hmm. so in terms of anesthesia, I mean, how often at this point in time is hypnosis used for that purpose? Well, I think it depends upon the practitioner. That's not an area that I specialize in, so I don't personally do that much. Um, but it's very easy to um, teach people how to do that in hypnosis. And I, it can be very beneficial in a wide variety of conditions, all the way from uh, dentistry um, on through certainly uh, a variety of illnesses, which have pain, like say cancer, for instance. Okay, so this could be something that would be quite helpful for chronic pain conditions. Very definitely. Rheumatoid arthritis, things like that. Very definitely. Childbirth is Childbirth. another large oh, that's application. that's a good point. Yes. Yeah. So in addition to your coaching, you could be listening to tapes at night to prepare right. yourself. And in fact, you mentioned improving sleep and controlling painful symptoms. Mm -hmm. What about blood pressure and heart rate? Oh, very definitely. Okay. Uh, you can teach people very easily to uh, lower their blood pressure. 
um, either within just a few minutes or to if they practice the hypnosis on a regular basis, uh, whether it's self-hypnosis or whether it's aided by a tape, uh, to lower their, their uh, blood pressure enough so that most of the time they can get off of medication oh. if they're really diligent about it. That's exciting. Now, enough. there are exceptions to that, of course, if it's a really um, sort of malignant hypertension. Um, but um, yes, it's very effective with hypertension. So particularly those who might be struggling with hypertension due to their own, oh, thinking process, meaning Definitely. that they would more like what we think of as type A kind right. of people. Okay. Right. Uptight folks. And there we go. There we go. <laughs> because literally when you get uptight, I mean, our words describe what's happening in our body. Okay, and those blood vessels get tight. Yeah, okay, so they you collapse like that, get right. tight. Now what about age regression? That's another thought about hypnosis. That yes. uh, one of the things as well, the hypnotherapist can take us back to when we were in infancy. Or, to, in fact, I've had clients talk about hypnotherapy for past lives. Um, will you speak to that a little bit? Certainly. In hypnotherapy, in the context of doing clinical work, age regression is often very useful to help resolve past trauma. The degree to which you regress a person, of course, is going to vary based on your clinical judgment and on the client's desire and so forth uh, to do that. But it's very, very intriguing because I can remember working with a man who had an abuse history. And during the course of therapy one day, he was eight years old sitting in my chair. I mean, you could see him in trance. Um, sort of squirming and fidgeting just like you do an eight-year-old. He was dealing with some uncomfortable material. And um, so this is a very powerful time because the hypnotherapist can give suggestions at this point to help resolve the trauma, the conflicts, help alleviate the suffering. And um, that, of course, carries through when the person wakes up. So then again, speaking to the amount of trust you would need to have here. Right. A therapist. Right. Okay. Very definitely. And we're going to have to close here in another minute, but please speak to past lives. I just must ask. <laughs> okay. Is it possible to be hypnotized to back when I was an Egyptian princess, for example? <laughs> well, I'm sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> Royalty of some kind. It depends on the client's belief. Okay. If the client believes in past lives, then yes, you will be able to. If the client doesn't believe in past lives, you're not going to get past lives. Okay, so even then, it's still very much controlled by That's our thinking. That's right. Lynn, I want to thank you very much for joining us this evening. This has been interesting. I've my pleasure. desire to go plug in my tape recorder. <laughs> um, I want to thank you for joining us this evening. In the upcoming weeks, we'll learn about managing change and sexually exploitive therapists. I'm Mary Crocker Cook. Good night. Topic suggestions write to Bay Area Psychology at 1723 Hamilton Avenue, Suite A, San Jose, California, 95125, or call at 408 440